Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoosly Zoo, a collaboration project between me and the wonderful Paul Slee. So this is already the fourth episode of this series. And if you didn't see the first uh, three episodes, make sure you check those out as well. In the first episode, Paul created a, a wonderful entrance. Um, so you can check that one out on his channel. And the second episode, I created the modern panda house, which is on the back uh, where we are building right now. And in the last episode, uh, Paul added a um, African elephant habitat. So uh, if you didn't see those uh, episodes, make sure you check those out as well. And today we are continuing in this zoo. Uh, first of all, I want to give a little disclaimer. Um, I know the, um, the intro was a little bit different than usual. Um, there is a kind of a, yeah, how should I call it? It's called a collaboration zoo, but uh, it's starting to feel like a contest right now. So uh, we really want to, uh, yeah, upper our game. So we want to create the best builds we can. And uh, yeah, Paul started off with some uh, crazy intros. And I thought, okay, I might give it a shot as well and do it a little bit different. Um, I wasn't really feeling, um, yeah, to get any copyright claims on my YouTube channel yet. So yeah, I thought I'd uh, give it a shot. So I created a... Uh, a 15 second intro and it cost me like two and a half hours to make it uh, but there was also a outro so uh, yeah make sure you stick through until the end so you can uh, see that one as well uh, but yeah the zoo itself uh, also a very important uh, yeah actually much more important than the intros and the outros but what we are doing is we are creating a modern zoo in the tropical asia region so what I'm doing today is I'm creating a uh, rhino habitat. Um, it's actually called rhinoceros or something, but that's impossible to pronounce for a Dutch guy. So um, yeah, that was my first and last shot of uh, yeah, trying to pronounce that. I think I actually did quite a good job on that. But anyway, um, so this habitat is actually inspired by a, a panda habitat in Copenhagen Zoo, I think, which is like a yin yang habitat and i know it doesn't look anything like it in the end but actually this viewing area was um yeah highly inspired by this i was googling some images again i already created like an entire pinterest page only for this zoo so every time i'm uh, i'm up for a new episode i could just go to that pinterest page and i think okay i can build something like that and today um yeah it was uh, this idea so below there will be a restaurant and also a viewing area the idea is that the people can sit down have a drink have something to eat and can still have like a great look at the animals um but yeah and then yeah overall the view and the uh, the look of the building must be modern so yeah there will be a lot of glass a lot of white plaster as we are doing right now so i'm already uh yeah far in the build uh, i was starting off with some path work which was a struggle i have to admit again um yeah the the, the, the path tool isn't my friend anymore uh, unfortunately i got the feeling that it's getting worse but <laughs> it's uh, it might be me trying out new stuff and uh, i'm not able to do it with the with the pathing tool uh, but yeah in the end i will cover up anything so it will look nice and it will be functional as well uh, but yeah, it's just a little bit more pieces and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so the building, uh, really simple, really modern and um, yeah, just a lot of uh, white plaster and glass. And I actually wanted to do a little bit with the terrain. I didn't want the zoo to be entirely flat. Uh, that's really unrealistic. I mean, this is not the Netherlands, so not everything is flat. And yeah, I just wanted to uh, yeah give it a, a, a little bit more, uh, yeah, I don't know more creativity a little bit less boring to uh, to look at so uh, the path is going down right here and we'll go around the habitat um, but there are actually only a few places that you can uh, see the animals in the end so you will have the restaurant and there will be a nice terrace on top of it and then on the other side you will have another viewing area uh, which uh, yeah gives you a perfect view on the animals and along the path there will be some fencing and stuff so you uh, yeah you can't really see the uh, the animals from there and uh, yeah that was the whole idea behind this so i did want to give the animals some privacy 
and just yeah it, it looks weird if you can just see the animals from um, yeah the entire part i just wanted to have some dedicated viewing areas um i'm trying to put a little bit more attention to the details so like in the red panda house i did i it felt a little bit yeah i don't know unfinished on the inside uh, like no education and stuff like that and not a lot of details in there so um, i will get back to the inside of the building later on in the video i try to slow the footage down a little bit i actually normally i speed it up eight times but i was looking at it and it looked weird or something i was afraid people would get sick when they were watching it so i slowed it down a little bit so i uh, i hope this is a little bit better for you guys uh, to watch it as well let me know down in the comments if it's better yes or no um and yeah it would be uh, yeah good for me to know so yeah i'm finally covering up the pathing, thing um because then everything looks much better um a mirroring tool that's what i want in the game so uh, if anyone from frontier is watching i really want a mirroring tool so if i build something i can just hit one button and it will mirror it to the other side i mean i can dream um i don't think uh, something is like actually possible in a game like this but yeah who knows uh, but for these plaster pieces you can just turn them around and um, yeah you will actually have the mirrored version but yeah if you're doing something like a building or, or something like that it would be so much easier if you have a mirroring tool um, so yeah please make it uh, the mulch uh, it, I, I know everything looks like kind of weird when I was starting it there was only like a few paths and yeah even I was thinking okay where am I going with this uh, but in the end everything looks so good and yeah it, it's just uh, be patient and uh, we will get there and trying to um, cover everything up and it, it was good that i actually had an idea in mind of where i was going and it ended up completely different of course but i i, I still had something in mind uh, which is good trying to uh, plan out everything a little bit more um yeah just a lot of detailing uh, over here as well so with the mulch and also with these temple stones these temple stones are just really really good uh, also if you want to go for like a modern stuff or, or whatever it, it, it just fits everywhere you can change the colors um, yeah it just looks good and that's uh, that's what we want right um, so another thing I found I think also on the panda habitat in Copenhagen was just like these logs and you create a fence out of it it really looks modern and I think these logs we already use them uh, all around the zoo and it just yeah just a little bit of a different touch with these things and then of course glass and with the same logs i'm creating the fence over here so people won't drop down when they are uh, watching the animals but they still have a perfect view on the animals because of the glass um so yeah really in the end it's it's a really cool viewing area on top of it and if you go down into the restaurant it just looks good um so yeah i think for the guests it's a uh, it's a perfect uh, experience for them. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, covering up uh, with some rocks over here as well. I'm just trying to, uh, yeah, put everything, yeah, fill everything up with like rocks and then plants because I wasn't able to do it with the terrain tool because the terrain tool and the pathing, yeah, just don't like each other. So uh, yeah, a lot of rocks and plants and um, yeah, that will make the entire habitat look finished um just a little safety touch over here some rails so that yeah the people uh, won't be uh, dropping down i didn't put it in perfectly at the first time so uh, i had to change it a little bit um making a group out of these fencing because i thought yeah i'm coming going to use this uh yeah probably quite often um for the entire habitat that i had in mind so yeah i, I just created a group copied it to the other side and uh, there it was uh these trees I i'm really happy that i found these it's like um yeah, a new kind of bush for me to uh, to use in this uh, in the zoo um I'm, I'm always sticking with the same plants I, I found myself always using the same pieces and i'm just trying different things in this uh, zoo which is good and um, yeah it, it just makes me yeah challenged in the game and yeah just trying out different stuff and uh, forcing myself to be a little bit more creative with all the pieces because there's so many pieces in the game that i never touched which is strange um 
so you always end up using the same stuff and i didn't want that anymore so uh, i'm trying to uh, use a lot of new pieces every episode and especially in uh, in this zoo of course uh, because i didn't really work with the modern stuff yet so that's why i really want to uh, yeah, do a little bit more with the with the pieces again uh, some struggling with the yeah the pathing tool uh in the end it looks uh, just the way i want it uh, but the viewing area over here i will cover it up anyway because it will just uh, look a lot better with this concrete again it's a modern zoo so i want everything to look finished and and nice and and clean um so i was thinking first okay i'm gonna create like a natural lake or something like that but yeah it just doesn't fit into the zoo so what I'm doing here is I'm doing the same thing as I did in the previous episode with uh, the river that I created. Or oh, yeah, I'm not, not really sure if you couldn't call it a river, but just a huge fountain basically. Um, so I'm putting the water in and just for hygiene reasons and it just looks uh, much better. A lot of concrete in, in this area and then the plaster on the other side. I think the concrete just has a little bit more, um, how should I call it? Yeah, like a little bit more structure on it that it looks a little bit different from the plaster and um, I think that looks a little bit better for stuff like this and uh, when you compare it to the to the plaster pieces so the, again the same fencing as on the other side um, the 3d gizmo wasn't uh, my friend as well in this episode so I had to do some things uh, yeah once or twice you sometimes see me struggle with that but I really like the defense like this um, so yeah, that's what that's what we want in the zoo, right? So a lot of glass, wood, the plaster, and I think uh, yeah, I did a pretty decent job with uh, with like the pieces that we uh, agreed on, uh, which is basically the only thing that we agreed on. And uh, I think Paul and I are actually finding out the same thing that we don't really have any plans. And uh, yeah, it's actually quite funny. Um, I think uh, this is a, a nice collaboration. It's really relaxed. Um, we are both yeah far for, uh, far ahead on schedule um, as people might know i uh, i travel quite a lot for uh, for my job and um, it was good that we were ahead because i had to travel and then uh, i still had like one and a half week to uh, to finish up this episode which is uh, perfect for me and while i'm recording uh, this uh, yeah i think it's only uh, like four or five days uh, before i actually release this video which uh, for me is uh, yeah quite a lot ahead on uh, our schedule so that's uh, really relaxed and um, i think the zoo is already looking really really good and it's also a good thing that we only stick to uh, 20 episodes because the piece count is uh, yeah already uh, going up if you create fences like this uh, i'm not the one that should say okay we uh, we did a bad job on the piece count because i'm ruining it uh, already but i wanted to make sure that i put a animal in there that couldn't use these logs because that's very important if you are going to use a lot of logs like this make sure that yeah the, the animal can't use it or isn't just able to reach it at all because again the game will start calculating the climbable area then you will have a problem your game starts lagging and uh, i mean in the end we can remove the guests and only have the animals in there uh, it's i mean it's a sandbox game you can turn off everything although you really can't like 100 percent turn off the animal welfare which is strange because you will still get messages um which i realized while i'm working on like uh, the new series called planet zoo tours um you can't really disable all the animal welfare you will still get messages like the animals are hungry or whatever which is weird um because i just want to create something nice and throw some animals in there um but that's also the thing with the game the animals are like yeah not the main thing from the game i think it's the creativity and the stuff you can do with the game because while i was building this i actually had no clue which animal i wanted to put in i was also uh, watching uh, one of paul's streams and i was yeah i was telling him okay the habitat is just almost finished and i still have no clue what i want to put in when i was looking at the habitat it would be like the perfect place to put an elephant in but yeah, Paul already did that in the previous episode. So that's why I decided to put the rhinos in here. And uh, yeah, in the end, it, uh, it they fit in perfectly. So uh, yeah, no problems at all. Um, yeah, while I'm uh, talking about nothing again, the, um, this, the staff gate was a struggle. I couldn't get it connected with the path. And I think that's one of the things that they're going to 
improve in or improve with the uh, parting tool that you can't really connect it when it's like the, when the path is on a grid and you want to connect a path uh, like on the middle of it you could yeah you just can't you have to stick with that grid and that's a little bit weird um some nice flooring on the inside i found these pieces i don't know where uh somewhere in a blueprint or something that i downloaded and uh, this is just a perfect way to create like shiny tiles on the floor and uh, it looks uh, really modern it looks good so that's what we want in this zoo uh, i think by now i decided which animals i wanted to put in and i thought okay this uh, area is way too small to fit a rhino and um, so i was afraid when the keepers would uh, throw in the animals that the uh, rhino wouldn't be able to uh, to go anywhere so i wanted to make this area a little bit bigger and give them uh, a little bit of shelter as well just in the end these logs this fencing with all the foliage it just looks really really good i'm really happy that i found uh, these uh, images of these uh, yeah of this fencing again uh, this is kind of a struggle it, it takes me a while and uh, i don't know why i, I first like used the, the actual fencing and just didn't cover it up with plaster but I don't know, sometimes uh, yeah, I keep surprising myself on uh, how stupid I can be, I guess. Um, so yeah, this area almost finished. I couldn't get the path or the, the terrain completely uh, how I wanted it, but yeah. Um, sometimes I have to, uh, yeah, I don't know, just just go uh, yeah, just go ahead and don't start like um, yeah, spending 20 minutes on uh, on one p on like one pile of uh, dirt yet. Just uh, yeah, I just don't have to do that. So uh, yeah, the terrain uh, inside the habitat, I'm trying to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then I thought, okay, a rhino and glass. I think the animal can just go through it without any problems in, in real life. Of course, we are not really going for realism, but I thought, okay, um, a fence might be, uh, yeah, might be useful here and over here as well. I think a rhino can just uh, go through these logs. So um, some metal bars would maybe, uh, yeah, keep them uh, in their uh, in their habitat i mean uh, i didn't see them trying yet so that's good um so the same fencing on the other side um yeah just some some safety things i think it looks yeah it looks good in the end um i will remove the fence over here because we have a lot of concrete there as well and then i'm already going in with the foliage and the foliage i did think about this um you can try to yeah, create a nice zoo and use the like the, the, the foliage that the animal wants in his habitat. But I think that's actually really unrealistic. If you go to like Singapore Zoo, you won't see a like Africa savanna where the, the giraffes are in. You know, you would see like a tropical area with the giraffes or with the with the rhinos. And we are going for a tropical Asia. Uh, zoo as well I, I visited Singapore Zoo um, several times and uh, that that's a good inspiration for me as well and then I thought okay I've never seen like um, savannah grass over there or whatever it would always be tropical um, yeah plants so um, but you would also see like animals that can't stand the heat would have a indoor area just like the red pandas that I did in the previous episode so that kind of realism I really want to uh, put into this zoo as well. So just stick with the tropical theme and just stick with the uh, yeah the things you would actually see in this area. Which is, uh, yeah, in the end I'm really happy with uh, how this uh, habitat is looking. So uh, yeah, please let me know what you uh, think of course down in the comments. If you have anything that uh, I should improve about it or which you think... Um, yeah can be better or um, yeah super unrealistic or that did completely wrong of course um, i can still disagree with you but <laughs> yeah, just let me know your thoughts down in the comments i always appreciate that and uh, i will always reply to every single comment i get on the video and uh, the previous video it was a really um, yeah i was really happy with that i did see a lot of uh, new people uh, joining the uh, the channel so I'm really happy with that. I had a lot of uh, positive feedback on that. So um, yeah, a lot of people uh, really like the uh, the Red Panda House. So um, yeah, I'm really, uh, really happy with that. Um, it's a really cool project that we are working on. And every time I'm really excited to uh, yeah to start working on it again. I already have some ideas for, uh, for the next one, actually. Um, 
I don't know how Paul is doing it, but uh, yeah, he told me he worked uh, one and a half hour on his uh, on his uh, little habitat. Uh, sometimes, uh, somehow, it, it's taking me a lot longer. So uh, this build, uh, it took me like six to eight hours. Um, because I do experiment like quite a lot. I delete a lot of stuff and I had to cut it out as well. So editing for me uh, as well is a little bit more work. But yeah, in the end, uh, we will get there. And this, this was actually quite a big project as well. So yeah, it took me a little bit longer. And also the intro outro, yeah, it took me several hours. And it was the first time I created a animation. So yeah, let me know what you think. I know it's horrible, but yeah, just let me know what you uh, what you think about it. Um, some uh, some custom sunshades. Actually, again, something I found on Pinterest. And I thought it would look really cool, really modern, and really tropical as well. So uh, I'm removing these, putting uh, yeah the new things in, and it looks really good. And I thought, okay, I need a full one as well. So let's create a full one for the uh, picnic tables that I already added to um, yeah to the terrace. Um, I really hope this terrace will actually be used. If uh, yeah, if you're following uh, Veluazu, you know that I uh, usually create terraces that people will never use. Um, so the other side, I in or like I uh, I raised the concrete up, and then the benches would like disappear in it, so that looks weird. So some artificial benches over here that Paul already created. I really like them. Although I would think that it's not really realistic because if this would be metal and the uh, the overall temperature over here is 37 degrees. So if one someone would sit down on that, yeah, you probably won't be able to sit down anymore for the rest of the day or even the rest of the week. Um, or maybe you can just use the benches to, uh, I don't know, fry some eggs on it. Uh, but yeah, it looks good. So that's what we're going for. Um, yeah, for the foliage, I actually have been looking at the uh, latest episodes of um, Kowali Zoo. Of course, I think everyone knows about Kowali Zoo and the stuff that Mike Sheets and uh, Eben have been doing in there. It's just amazing and I really like the foliage on that. I mean, uh, yeah, we can all learn from, uh, from these guys when it comes to foliage and details and uh, whatever. So I really enjoy watching that and I uh, yeah, just found some really cool ideas for the foliage as well. Um, so yeah. I, I try not to stick with only the uh, the tropical plants, but I just want it to look good and look tropical. So I, I do want to give it a tropical look, but yeah, for in the game you don't really have to stick with the um, tropical plants only. Because this elephant grass just makes it look a lot better actually. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm using uh, these all over the place. Um, and yeah, with that we almost reached the end of the video so uh, the speed build will go on uh, for a few minutes probably i will do some um, some lighting some final details on the uh, inside area and uh, that will be it of course we have a wonderful outro and um, yeah some beautiful cinematics in the end of the video so make sure you check that, those out as well and uh, yeah i just want to thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed the video make sure you uh, hit the like button and if you didn't do it already, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on any new content. And uh, make sure you check the next episode out on Paul's Lee, his channel. And I will speak to you guys in the next one. Goodbye.